Where would Russia most likely use nuclear weapons if the United Kingdom was its intended target? So I had a viewer ask me this question and I thought about it. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that the UK would actually be a very good target if the objective were to destabilize NATO and set the conditions for a Russian victory in Ukraine by causing a humanitarian crisis. Now, the first thing I have to invoke here is the very bad things rule. Very Bad Things was a 1998 movie about a bachelor party that goes horribly wrong and an exotic dancer dies in the bathroom of the party. And the character played by Christian Slater says something very interesting. He says, if you take away the horror of the scene, take away the tragedy of the death, take away all the moral and ethical implications that have been drilled into you since grade one, do you know what you're left with? A 105 pound problem that needs to be moved from point A to point B. So I'm not saying I want any of this to happen, but if it does, here's how it might happen. Now the slideshow, the Google Earth presentation, and the casualty figures are all on my website for download. You can find the link in the description below. I have to give credit to NukeBap by Alex Wellerstein, who made a lot of the technical data available online. Without him, this would have been a lot harder to calculate. And I have to start by talking about delivery methods. Now, there's basically two delivery methods. There's air burst, which is good for blast effects. It distributes the energy of the nuclear detonation across your target so that you get good blast and thermal effects on your target. And then there's a ground burst. This is mainly for hardened targets and area denial. Now, air burst creates blast, thermal radiation, and prompt ionizing radiation all over your target, but it's not very dirty. It doesn't have a lot of long-term radiation. Whereas a ground burst has blast, thermal radiation, and ionizing radiation, but it also has that mushroom cloud. That's because the fireball of the explosion touches the ground and sucks all that dust and dirt and debris up into a cloud. And that cloud then falls out. Fallout is called fallout because it literally falls out of the sky, this big, long radioactive trail of debris. Now let's talk about Russia's operational intent. What does Russia want to get out of a nuclear strike in the UK? Well, the first thing they want to do is they want to disempower NATO. They want everybody in NATO cowed and wondering if they're gonna be next on Russia's hit list. The second thing they want to do is create a humanitarian crisis in the UK. The third thing they wanna do is cause maximum infrastructure damage. The fourth thing they want to do is minimize loss of life. There's a very specific reason for that. If you have a lot of people who are left alive and they all need food, water, and medical care, but their infrastructure is damaged, that means the rest of the world has to come in, cross an ocean, and use a lot of resources to take care of the people of the United Kingdom. Every resource that is being used to take care of the people of the UK is not being sent to Ukraine. And the fifth thing they want to do is minimize warhead expenditure. That way there are more warheads to strike back if Russia is counterattacked. Now let's talk about the strike platform. This will probably be done by one Bori class ballistic missile submarine, most likely in the Kara Sea. This will minimize the UK reaction time. The strike package can consist of two SSNX-30 SLBMs, or submarine launched ballistic missiles. Now each missile contains six warheads. This is called a MERV or multiple independent reentry vehicle. We're gonna have a total of 12 warheads in this strike package, and there'll be 10 targets, with two targets getting an additional warhead. Now there is precedent for a small number of missiles increasing reaction time. I want to introduce you to a very special person. This is Lieutenant Colonel Stanislav Petrov, the man who saved the world. You see, back in 1983, Soviet radar reported that the US had launched five missiles against the Soviet Union. Lieutenant Colonel Petrov judged the launch to be a radar malfunction because why would the U.S. only launch five missiles? It didn't make any sense. He was correct, and the world was saved. So by only launching two missiles, that might give us a couple of crucial seconds for the United Kingdom to decide not to counterattack in the hopes that this might be a malfunction. Now, there's more than one reason why using two missiles will be very useful. 
The second reason is that it'll show just how much only two missiles will cause devastation to a country. Remember, the goal here is to cause a humanitarian crisis on an island, which is harder to get to, harder to respond to. And hopefully this will make the rest of Europe fall in line. It will also retain second strike capability. You're not shooting every nuclear missile in your arsenal. Remember, you don't want to cause the end of the world. You just want to cause enough damage and humanitarian crisis for the rest of Europe to go, ooh, you know what? I don't want to play this game anymore. Now let's talk about strike intent. There's basically two types of targets that you go after, counter force and counter value. Counter force targets are military targets. They're military forces, installations, and military assets. They're basically stopping the enemy's ability to wage war. The second type is counter value targets. This is economic and population targets. Now this attack will be a mix between counter force and counter value, the reason for which you'll see once I get into the target list. It's designed to prevent the UK from responding politically, meaning other nations put pressure on the UK not to respond with a nuclear strike. It's designed to degrade NATO's political will to respond to Russia, and it's designed to cause maximum humanitarian crisis in the UK, thereby directing resources away from Ukraine. Now let's talk about targets. This is a map of all of the targets that I believe Russia would strike in a limited nuclear campaign. And we're going to start with RAF Flyingdales. This is a very important target because it's going to set the stage for destroying other targets. RAF Flyingdales in North Yorkshire will most likely be targeted with one 150 kiloton nuclear warhead fused for airburst. This will destroy the electronic early warning radar system that the US and the UK depend upon to find Russian ICBM threats. This will kill about 40 people and injure about 690. Now the next target is His Majesty's Naval Base or HMNB Clyde. This is the UK's premier submarine base. Now HMNB Clyde is so important as a Royal Navy submarine base that it will get two nuclear weapons. One will be an airburst nuclear weapon to destroy facilities. The other will be a ground burst nuclear weapon to irradiate the area. This will kill about 3,300 people and injure about 13,000 people. Now, this is the UK's only ballistic missile submarine base, so there's a lot of facilities there and a lot of knowledge there. Now, the next target is an air base. This will be RAF Lakenheath. Now, this is kind of a unique target and a very important target as well, so this is also going to get two nuclear weapons. This means one nuclear weapon to destroy the facilities and a second nuclear weapon to make the area radiologically dirty to prevent use of the airfield again. This will kill about 3,500 people and injure about twice that. It's primarily a U.S. base, which is kind of dangerous, but U.S. citizens are going to get killed in this attack anyway. And you can't pass up the fact that this has four fighter squadrons of F-35 and F-15 fighters. So if the United States decides to engage in a response against Russia, they're going to have to do it without an extra four squadrons of fighters and a major air base. Now the final counter force target on the list will be His Majesty's Naval Base in Portsmouth. HMNB Portsmouth will receive one airburst 150 kiloton nuclear device. It'll kill about 55,000 people and injure about 100,000 people. But this is a very important target because it's the headquarters of two-thirds of the Royal Navy fleet. Now, the next target list are going to be the counter-value targets. And I want you to remember one thing when going through this list. The data and commerce centers of today are the steel mills of yesteryear. And I also want you to remember that if you use a nuclear weapon on a steel mill, you destroy a steel mill. If you destroy a data center you destroy 10 steel mills and all of the businesses that supply those steel mills because without computer software and networks, you're not sending supplies to those steel mills. Now, the first counter value target will be the Folly Refinery. This will receive one airburst nuclear weapon of 150 kilotons. It'll kill about 23,000 people and injure about 18,000. And it also holds 20% of the UK's refinery capacity. It is the largest oil refinery in the UK. 
Now let's keep going down the refinery path because the more refineries are destroyed, the harder it will be for the United Kingdom to recover or fight back. So the next target is the Stanlow Oil Refinery. The Stanlow Oil Refinery will receive one 150 kiloton nuclear weapon fused for airburst. It'll kill about 17,000 people and injure about 78,000 people. It is the second largest oil refinery in the United Kingdom. So with just two nuclear weapons, we can destroy 37 to 40% of the United Kingdom's oil refining capacity. Now, the next likely target is the port of Felixstowe. And you're probably wondering, wait, why would you take out a port? Remember, we're aiming to cause a humanitarian crisis. So Russia will probably use one nuclear weapon fused for airburst, 150 kilotons. It will kill about 20,000 people and injure about 22,000 people. But here's why Felixstowe is important. The port of Felixstowe brings in 48% of the shipping containers for the United Kingdom. You destroy this port and its associated facilities, it makes it a lot harder to bring in shipping containers and supply the United Kingdom with goods. Now we have one more port that we have to take out before we move on to the data centers, and that is the port of Immingham. This port will probably receive one 150 kiloton nuclear weapon fused for air burst. It'll kill about 5,000 people and injure about 7,000 people. Here's what's important about this port. It is the largest port in the UK by tonnage. So we're talking about exporting energy, we're talking about importing energy, and we're talking about importing and exporting goods. So this port needs to be destroyed to severely hamper the UK's ability to import or export energy. The next target is going to kill a lot of people, but unfortunately that can't really be avoided because it is the modern steel mill. The next target is the Sovereign House AWS data center in London. Now remember what I said about data centers. Data centers are the steel mills of today. Destroy the data center, destroy the ability of your adversary to wage economic war. In this case, the most likely method of delivery will be a ground burst of 150 kilotons. This is going to cause about 177,000 deaths and about 880,000 injured. But it will take out the AWS data center, fiber, and telecommunications. Now, the second target is right across town. It is the second AWS data center, the Equinix data center. This will have a similar attack profile, a ground burst. It will kill about 68,000 people and injure about 116,000 people. And it will destroy London's second data center. Now, here is a map of all the target locations and the projected fallout from the ground bursts. Unfortunately, from the way this map looks, London is going to have a problem if those two data centers are attacked with nuclear weapons. Now, I want to talk about the Channel Tunnel or Channel for a moment. The Channel is a railway that goes underneath the English Channel and connects England with France. I didn't include the Channel Tunnel in this target package because I want the Channel open as Russia, what we want is as much rolling stock going into England as possible. Remember, the whole purpose of this operation is not to destroy the United Kingdom. It's to cause a humanitarian crisis in the United Kingdom. So that way, focus will shift from Ukraine to the United Kingdom. I've attached a list of the total casualties. It looks like the United Kingdom will suffer about 372,000 deaths and 1,200,000 injured. I actually took a look at the uh, National Health Service, or NHS. For those of you who don't know, uh, the United Kingdom has free health care. Uh, there are approximately 129,000 total hospital beds in the UK. So that is roughly 10% of what would be needed for all of the injured. So this would create a huge humanitarian crisis that the world would have to respond to. So let's talk about the global response to a Russian nuclear strike on the United Kingdom. There's going to be two options. The world will either not respond and convince the United Kingdom not to respond, or the world will respond with either equivalent or overwhelming force against Russia. I think the latter is more likely because the United Kingdom has a nuclear button as well. The United Kingdom is a country that has produced lion-hearted men like Sir Francis Drake, Lord Admiral Nelson, and Winston Churchill. Men who looked at evil in the face and stared it down. The United Kingdom has always stood up to evil and tyranny and oppression. And they'll do it again. While I don't think such an attack by Russia is likely, I'm also confident that the United Kingdom would prevail.
I can't say the same for Russia.